close your eyes and take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing most prominently in the body. Focus your attention there. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. Take shorter breathing, more shallow, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Try to get in touch with this breath element in the body. Because the breath isn't just the air coming in and out of the lungs. It's the whole flow of energy through the nervous system that allows that air to come in and go out. You can feel that anywhere. You get really sensitive, you realize you can feel it all over the body. And you can use it to make a sense of well-being and maintain a sense of well-being inside the body. This is going to be important because there are a lot of things in the world we know that we like to do that are going to give bad long-term results, or that we don't like to do but we give good long-term results. We may know these things, but sometimes we just don't have the strength to follow through with that knowledge. Or sometimes we just don't decide we don't care. And it's good to stop and ask yourself, if you don't take care of your own mind, take care of your own present moment and your future, who's going to take care of it for you? You've got to look after yourself. So here's a good way of settling down and watching yourself, and then taking the knowledge that you know is going to be useful for your long-term happiness and having the strength and the willingness to put it into practice. As the Buddha said, we live our lives intoxicated. He doesn't mean that we're intoxicated with liquor or marijuana all the time. It's more a, a deeper kind of intoxication. Yesterday during the ordination, there was that passage that I chanted from the new monks at the very end. A lot of people wonder, what's being said there? Well, the Buddha is basically giving you a list of things that you need to know. And at the very end, they have a list of reasons of why we practice. What's the goal of the practice? And one of the purposes of the practice is to overcome our intoxication. As the Buddha said, we're intoxicated with youth, with health, and with life. When we're young, we think we're going to be young for a long time. We look down on older people. When we're healthy, we don't think we're going to get sick very easily. And as long as we're alive, we tend to think, well, it's, death isn't going to come anytime soon. And here we forget that these things of youth, health, life, are not all that solid. They're very precarious. The other kind of intoxication is saying, well, if these things are precarious, let's just try to have a good time while we can. But you really have to prepare, because consciousness itself is that it's not going to be willing to, to die together with the death of the body. It's going to move on, take on whatever rebirth presents itself as a possibility. And sometimes when you're really desperate, you've got to leave the body and you're looking around, you can just go, go for anything. So you want to make sure that your mind goes for things that are good. For that, you have to develop good qualities in the mind. There's work to be done inside the mind right now. As the Buddha said, if you see any qualities in the mind that would make it difficult to let go of this life and to be careful in choosing the next life, you've got to work on getting rid of those qualities. As for qualities that would help, things like mindfulness, alertness, or as yesterday's t teaching to the new monks stressed again and again and again, virtue, concentration, and discernment. These are the things that will help you. Virtue is what keeps you honest. You take on a precept, and then you make up your mind that you're going to stick with it. Like no killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no taking of intoxicants. And then when you find yourself tempted to break the precept, you find ways of making sure that you don't. And that makes you, keeps you honest and also gets you in touch with the intentions in your mind. Because you break a precept only if you do it intentionally. So it gets you more and more clear about when you're doing something, why you're doing it. This is going to be useful knowledge as you try to train the mind in concentration and discernment. But the important thing is that it keeps you honest and keeps you alert, mindful. These are all qualities that you're going to need as you go through life and as you leave this life to go on to others. So there is a training. This is what the ordination is for, so the monk people can devote themselves full time to the training. For people who can ordain, you can devote yourself as much as you can. But the important principle is that you try not to be intoxicated with your youth, with your health, with your life. You've got to prepare for the time when these things are not going to, not going to be with you anymore, so that you can handle the situation wisely. And it starts with something very simple like this, training the mind. Like you're training it to stay with one object. If you can't do this, it's going to be hard to do anything that's more difficult. 
So learn how to keep coming back, coming back, coming back to the breath, and getting on a good terms with your breath. So this becomes a good place to stay. So you want to come back. That's a large part of discernment. It's making yourself want to do what you know will lead to your long-term welfare and happiness. So these are things that are always useful to keep in mind.